I am not a historian, but neither are you. So, how about we the people learn this stuff together? Welcome to US 101. And today's episode is brought to you by our brand new sponsor, Roy G. Biv. Happy Pride, everybody. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is Pride Month in the United States. And this past weekend here in Chicago, Pride Fest took place in the neighborhood of Boys Town. And this coming weekend in Chicago is the Pride Parade. Why did they split the two uh, into two separate weekends? It's because if you did the parade and the festival in one weekend, it would be the most glorious show of all time. Because if you've never been to a Pride Festival or a Pride Parade, you have no idea what you're missing out on, okay? It's awesome. Basically, you take everything that happens on St. Patrick's Day, move it from the spring to the summer, turn the intensity up to 11, add way more color, and promote love above everything else, it is amazing. LGBTQIA Americans party at these celebrations like there is no tomorrow, and with good reason. Because less than 50 years ago, not very long ago, guys, the idea of accepting gays and lesbians in society, let alone throwing a parade to celebrate them, was unheard of in America. That is until June 28, 1969, when something happened at a place called the Stonewall Inn in New York City that basically kicked off the entire LGBTQ movement. Because you have to understand something, guys, for context's sake. Back in the day, if you were gay in America, it was bad, bad times for you, okay? You were considered a second class, in some cases, a third class citizen. If you were found out to be gay, it was possible that you could be ostracized by your community, you could lose your job. In some cases, you could even be arrested and go to jail just for being who you were. Perfect example, New York City, which is considered to be one of the most liberal cities on the planet. Back in the day, they only had like a handful of gay establishments. And one of those places was the Stonewall Inn on Christopher Street, which was owned by, <laughs> you guessed it, the Mafia. Yup. It said that the Genovese crime family bought the Stonewall Inn and turned it into a gay bar. Now, the Stonewall was just your basic average bar. It did everything that a bar did. It served liquor to patrons. It was a place for people to hang out, listen to music, and just chill. Except for the fact that this bar did not have a liquor license. Furthermore, the Stonewall was special because it was the only gay bar in New York City that allowed dancing. And on top of that, according to Dick Leitch, the former executive director of the Mattachine Society of New York, the bar not only welcomed gays and lesbians, but other people as well. It catered largely to a group of people who are not welcome in or cannot afford other places of homosexual social gathering. The drags and the queens, the very young homosexuals, and those with no other homes. Now every so often, just so that the police could say that they were doing their job, uh, the police would raid all these gay establishments for not having liquor licenses. But again, with the mafia running interference, the business was continued to, you know, keep selling liquor after the raid was over. Still though, for people that were in the bar, it wasn't really a good deal because during the raid what would happen is the music would stop, the lights would go up, police would line all the patrons up against the bar and would check everyone's ID. If you had proper ID, fine, you were allowed to stay. But if you were someone that was, let's say, dressed inappropriately according to them, i.e. if you were a man dressed as a woman, you were marched right up to the paddy wagon and you were arrested. And at the time, because of these raids, other gay clubs in New York City like the Checkerboard and the Telestar were shut down for illegally selling liquor. And to many in the gay community, these raids and these shutdowns of these bars made it seem as if police did not want the gay community to have any hangouts whatsoever. And then, on June 28, 1969, the Stonewall was raided. The lights went up, the music shut off, everybody was lined up against the bar, IDs were checked, and if you didn't have an ID or if you were dressed inappropriately, you were marched outside and you were arrested. Except that this night was different because during the arrests, a larger crowd slowly started to form outside of the Stonewall Inn. And as the patrons were being marched into the paddy wagon, the crowd started chanting slogans like gay power and we want freedom to the police. And finally, a woman that was being arrested before she was put into the paddy wagon turned to the crowd and shouted, why don't you guys do something? And that's when all hell broke loose. The crowd began going after the police. They started throwing pennies at them. They started throwing beer bottles at them. And the police tried to fight back. But every time they knocked down a member of the crowd, the crowd just got louder and they just got angrier. And eventually, the police had to barricade themselves inside the Stonewall Inn until New York riot police showed up to break up the skirmish. Now, some of you, after hearing that story, may have the reaction of, okay, the crowd obviously was a bit too over the top. There was no reason to 
attack the police. I'm sure if they dispersed peacefully, everything would have been fine. But allow me to pose this argument to you, okay? Back then in 1969, this is a group of people that is marginalized constantly. They are targeted repeatedly, time and time again. They are not liked, they are hated in some instances. Many Americans don't want gays and lesbians around because they think that they're gonna pervert their children. The Stonewall Inn was a place that they could call home. And then someone walked into their house and marched them out of it and threw them into jail for simply living their life, basically, if you're backed into a corner, you're gonna do one of two things. You're either gonna lay down or you are going to fight. And fight they did because following the night of the riot for the next six days, protests took place all throughout New York City. Gay and lesbian civil rights groups began forming, including most famously the Gay Liberation Front, which was famous for having the word gay openly in their name. These groups for the next six days and beyond would continue to press for equal rights for those in the LGBTQ community. And then a year later, on June 28, 1970, Christopher Street Gay Liberation Day took place in New York City and there was an assembly that was gathered outside the Stonewall. And this was the very first Pride Parade. Meanwhile, on the same day, Pride Parades also took place in Chicago, Los Angeles, and San Francisco in honor of the Stonewall Riots, or Stonewall Uprising, I should say. And then in 1971, Boston, Dallas, Milwaukee, London, Paris, and Stockholm held their own Pride Parades, and every year since, more cities have held their own Pride Parades, their own Pride celebrations, and these Pride Festivals have now become an integral part of American culture. So my advice to you guys, if there's a pride festival or a pride parade happening in your area this coming weekend, go experience it. Live, love, laugh, make new friends, man. You'll see a side of America that you might not be used to, you might not be familiar with, but it's good to understand it because then you learn to appreciate it more. And for those of you that go to pride festivals regularly, continue to promote it. Continue to promote the fact that love exists everywhere and it should be embraced by everyone. And that, my friends, is it for this episode of US 101. Thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, thank you to all of you that have subscribed to the channel, and for those of you that have uh, shared the videos, uh, liked the videos, left comments on the videos, I, I can't thank you guys enough for continuing to be involved in US 101. It, I, I, I appreciate it, thank you. As always, you can follow us on the Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, all those links down below in the description box. And guys, if you still wanna submit your own viewer intros to kick off episodes of US 101, you you can send your intros to ushistory1882 at gmail.com. I look forward to seeing your guys' submissions because I want you guys to kick off future episodes of the show. On that note, guys, I will see you next Tuesday for another episode of US 101. I am all done. And remember, just love everybody because we're all in this together. So why don't we just all get along, man? See you next week.